As we hear the story of Jesus appearing to the apostles in the upper room, we can imagine putting ourselves in that scene. And we notice they experienced many different things when Jesus all of a sudden appeared to them. The two disciples who had been uh, sharing the story were the ones who went to Emmaus. And then as soon as Jesus revealed himself to them, it happened in the breaking of the bread. They didn't recognize him at first, that Jesus was walking along with them on the road. And he explained all the scriptures about how it was necessary for Christ to die and rise from the dead. But it wasn't until they invited him into their home at the end, and he broke the bread, gave it to them, and they realized it is Jesus. They recognized him in the breaking of the bread, which in the early church is a word for the, the celebration of the Eucharist. That means the way that Jesus is with us now is in a way that is not visible to our eyes. It says he vanished from their sight, but he was still with them in presence. And that's the way that he is still with us today in the Eucharist, in the breaking of the bread. So the disciples at first were terrified they thought they were seeing a ghost, but he said, come up and touch me. Put your finger in my nail marks and see the hands and feet and realize I'm not a ghost. I have flesh and bones. And he even ate some fish in front of them to show that he has risen from the dead. But it's the same body that he had on the cross because it had the, the holes from the nail marks in his hands and in his feet. The resurrection, Jesus says, touch me and see I am not a ghost. And so he still gives us that opportunity to touch the Lord, to take him into our hands, to taste him, and to receive him in holy communion. In which we're not just touching him, but being united to him. He says, remain in me and I in you. And so if this is true, the Eucharist is not just bread that symbolizes Jesus. It actually is Jesus, the Lord. Then what does that mean for us as we are preparing to receive him in Holy Communion? What are the fruits of Holy Communion in our lives? First of all, it increases our union of love with Jesus. He says, he who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. It nourishes the spiritual life that was given to us when we were first baptized. Secondly, it separates us from sin. By receiving communion, our venial sins are forgiven. And it preserves us from future mortal sins. Third, it makes us part of the body of Christ, which is the church. St. Paul says, the bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? The body of Christ is one. By receiving communion, we're being united with everyone else who is receiving communion to be part of this one body, the church. Fourth, it commits us to the poor, to be able to recognize Jesus is present in the poor. Mother Teresa and her sisters, the missionaries of charity, always would pray an hour in the morning of adoration before the Blessed Sacrament on the altar. And some of the people said, why don't you just start helping the people right away? You could, you could take that hour and help more people. And she said, if we are not able to recognize Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, we won't be able to recognize him in the poorest of the poor. Fifth, it leads to Christian unity. Jesus prayed that the church would be one, that all of the followers of Christ would be united. And the Eucharist leads us to that unity. And finally, it is a foretaste of heaven. Heaven is being with God, being with the Lord, dwelling in his place where he is and receiving his love. So the closest we can be to Jesus, this side of heaven, is in Holy Communion, when we receive him and take him into our souls. 
So as we come forward for Holy Communion later on, we pray that we can remember and think about this isn't just bread that I'm receiving, it is actually Jesus. It is the Lord, the person that I'm receiving into my soul. And we spend some time then in prayer and conversation with Jesus. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine.